You've had a lifetime of success. You've become business leaders. You're financially secure. You're happily married. You've watched your adult children grow up and be successful. You've watched your grandchildren grow up and be successful. And not a day has gone by that you haven't thought about what you and your college team did 60 years ago. In fact, it's meant so much to you that you guys get together every single year thereafter, including this year, 2082, for your 60 year reunion. <laughs> That's the 1962 National Championship team behind Who are here today, living legends, <laughs> particularly in our own minds. <laughs> Except if you ask their wives. <laughs> but they're here today celebrating the greatest achievement, the pinnacle of collegiate athletics. And they are the epitome of the phrase that we say, Teams that win together stay together. So it is my pleasure to introduce the guys that we have up on the pedestal, the absolute mountaintop, the team that we talk about all the time, the team whose uniforms we designed after you. The 19 They're not wool, though. <laughs> They're not wool. So let's give it up for these guys. So, Dick, I'm going to turn it over to you, and uh, you bring your teammates up, and uh, gotcha. I appreciate uh, <laughs> 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 that. These, these guys would like to share some, a little bit of wisdom with you guys. Hey, first of all, I want to just say that this is a combination team. This is not just the 62 team. It's actually the 61 when we won the Big Ten Championship and 62 when we won the National Championship. And we combined the two teams for for purposes of reunions because there was only like seven or eight uh, players that, that were in 61. Uh, most of us were sophomores in 61. Remember, we didn't play as freshmen, so we were first year guys. And actually of the nine players, uh, six were sophomores that year that, that played and started, and most of, including most of our pitching staff. So, so you know the, kind of the context of when I start introducing and I tell him this is a, a, just a 61 Big Ten guy or a 62 uh, national championship guy. And some of us went on to, obviously, we were juniors in 62, so we, uh, so we had one more year there after which we've been trying to forget. So uh, uh, let me start with the, the, the 61. So this is Franz Newbrick. Franz was a pitcher in 1961, was a senior. Berkeley, Michigan, I believe. Yes, sir, the Berkeley Bears. Berkeley Bears. <laughs> you can talk from back there if you guys want to, too, so. Okay, my name is Franz Newbeck. My yeah, wife, well, Joan, and I live in Berkeley Springs, uh, Michigan. Yeah. Came down to uh, the nice weather to get here and see you guys play. And um, it's, uh, it's our pleasure. I was a graduate of uh, pharmacy school. So I have a BS in pharmacy from Michigan and uh, a master's in hospital pharmacy from Wayne State and a doctor of pharmacy from Creighton University. So it's a long time student for, for a while, but it's, uh, it's paid off. Um, the team, the team. That's, that's what I remember, the team and the long time that we've had these friends meeting all over the United States every year different places with a usually a person who was on the team but is living in say San Antonio uh, right back there um, we'd go to those cities and have our reunion so that, that's my blessing long-term friendships uh, that don't stop bless you uh -huh. one team but a sophomore at the time Mike Joyce was a pitcher for us and he, uh, he escaped on us and signed with the uh, White Sox uh, after a, a great sophomore year Mike 
And yeah. his son, uh, Chris, where are you, Chris? Right next to you. Yep. <laughs> 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 um, guys, I'm, uh, I'm a graduate of uh, LSNA, if you will. Um, essentially, I was born and raised in Royal Oak, Michigan. I actually played Little League ball with uh, John Kerr and Freehand. And so ultimately, uh, the thing that uh, I've had a number of different positions and so forth since I left here, but I got to be honest with you, this isn't meant to be a dumber. You know, I, I don't want you to feel badly about this. I did not maximize my time at Michigan for a whole bunch of reasons, not many of them, but. And all I want to suggest to you is that my idea was um, come here, do as much as I can, get a little bit of an education, but for damn sure go out and play baseball. And uh, guys, <laughs> it's more than baseball. So ultimately, you really need to be lucky. So my suggestion would be to you that you maximize the time that you have, not only as Franz has said with the, uh, your players and uh, so forth, but with your coaches. They're supposed to be coaches so they can help you. Let me tell you something. They can't help you unless they know what help you want. So speak up. Those are some things that I did not do. And uh, had I a chance to do it over, I, I would do that. So good luck. I know we're between you and another win. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, see, one of our seniors in uh, 1962 was our manager. And you know, you know, there's a head coach, assistant coach, and then the manager, and those are the three most important people on your staff because they do all the work. We get all the fun, they do all the work. Bruce Crapshot. I would have loved to have played as a team, but coming from a small school and not uh, being the same uh, caliber that, that are recruited by Michigan, I knew that. Uh, my only chance would be to be a student manager, and I really enjoyed that opportunity. And it was great to be a part of this, this season, the American this season. Michigan prepared me for a lot of things. I got a BBA degree in 1962, ironically on the same day that we won the championship in Omaha. And uh, I went out and got my MBA, majored in accounting and finance in 63. And Michigan, I couldn't have asked for a better education. My career, I was a CPA with a national firm, then a corporate executive, then I bought a business, eventually sold that business, and the last 35 years, I've been a consultant, helping other medium-sized business owners sell their companies. My wife tells me at age 81, it's time to retire, but I'm having too much fun. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's good to see you all. Night we lost our assistant coach at the time with Moby Benedict, and we lost earlier, lost our head coach, Don Lund. But his daughter is here, Susan Allison Lund, and Aunt Lund Allison, and Bruce, her husband, and son, Don. Yeah. So. All right, let's say, let's see now the seniors in 62, our captain, uh, Mr. Ed Hood, uh, local Ann Arbor guy. Uh, so, Edward. Thank you, Richard. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for allowing us to join you. Um, I recall the days when trying to make the decision where to go to school, and uh, that caused me to look as deeply as I could into uh, what did Michigan have to offer? And the first thing that springs to mind is, number one, awful lot of guys from Detroit were coming <laughs> to Michigan. It's, that wasn't necessarily the case before then. And, uh, you know, and guys like Bill Freehan and Dick Honig and Pritch Fisher were, you know, decided they were going to go to Michigan. So it looked like a pretty darn good place to be. And of course they had the coaches at the time that were amazing. No more amazing than the ones you have now. Yeah. But there was, uh, of course there was uh, Ray Fisher, who was the legendary left-handed pitcher for the Yankees. And, uh, and then we had uh, Don Lund, who the more I, uh, all these years uh, we've known Don and been around him, he never said much about himself. But little by little, I learned things like Don was uh, all Big Ten basketball player and captain of the team. He's an all Big Ten football player and first round draft choice in the NFL. 
and what was his third sport? Basketball, football, and baseball. baseball. And of course, he uh, was with the Tigers, and he had an amazing stat that I remember uh, when Don was still in the minor leagues. He was leading the league he was in at that time in home runs. He got called up to the Tigers, had a great career with the Tigers, and then, of course, headed up the farm system. So Don was an absolute legend, and that was a great recruiting tool for Michigan. <coughs> And he hired as his uh, assistant, Moby Benedict. Moby was energetic, incredible coach, incredible guy. And the first player to hit a home run in Briggs Stadium uh, while he was a high, in high school. So uh, he was an incredible athlete. He jumped center on the <coughs> basketball team, although he was five foot eight. And they had a guy six foot seven on the team. So it gives you an idea of his jumping ability. Uh, I was told when I was thinking about where to go to college that if I chose Michigan, I'd never regret it. And wow, is that true? Really, really true. It uh, provided everything, the best facilities, in my mind, the best coaches, and an incredible atmosphere. So you guys are blessed with what you have. Look around you, you know, you got, you've got the facilities, you've got the coaches, and it's now it's the time and place to win. So, thank you for letting us uh, speak. Joe, where are you? I get the two grand slams and the three run over. Where are you? There you are, right there. Okay. You think that was good? Do you think that was good? The next guy introduced, pitched two games in one day. <laughs> Nine innings and ten innings in the regional NCAA tournament. Threw 319 pitches. Drove in the winning run in the tenth inning of the second game. Now that's a good day. <laughs> John Kerr. I guess it was a career for most of us. It was a career for me. <laughs> uh, I played on both the 61 and the 62 team. Didn't do much of anything in 61 and had a good year in 62. Uh, it was a great time and uh, I got two degrees here from Michigan, uh, one a Bachelor of Business Administration and another an MBA. And uh, in those days there were eight teams. Baseball, for me, didn't have much of a future because I was what they called a slow-throwing left-hander. Every time I come to these reunions, I have to hear from these guys how slow I threw. <laughs> Thank God there were no uh, no uh, speed guns in those days. So they had no idea. And for one year, nobody hit that slow stuff. So I had a, I had a, a good time. But I graduated here from uh, Michigan with an MBA. And I would stress, as Mike did, I, I was, he, he's a, another Royal Oaker. We're both from Royal Oak. But uh, for some of you, professional baseball will be a venue, but for the majority of you, it won't. And uh, those degrees that you end up with out of this university are vital. I mean, they are do door openers uh, when you go to get employment in this country. Uh, when I traveled quite a bit of, uh, in my time with Volkswagen, uh, I traveled the world, and no matter where you went, on the streets, you'd see people in get maize and blue and you'd see people with caps on that were M caps and always, you were always able to, able to start up a conversation and have, have something in common. When I retired, I was the president of Volkswagen of America, so I had a, a reasonably good business career also. Uh, I would say uh, how important was baseball in, in my life? I, I was fortunate enough to be with these guys and after 60 years we still have a great friendship and thanks to our mentor Mr. Honig he gets us together periodically and, and we have a good time and I also had a son who played here in the 80s and I had a grandson that just finished up here in 2019 some of you who know some of you played on that ball club but that was that was sort of the for me anyway kind of the ultimate uh, <laughs> Uh, for prize for the whole situation. So 
you're very lucky to be involved in this program. There's great opportunities you'll have no matter where you go and take advantage of them. Go Blue. <laughs> Fisher, Fritz, uh, left-handed pitcher from Adrian. Uh, I still think maybe holds some of the pitching records here, although you guys play a lot more games than we do. Uh, I think well, you were 9-1 the senior year, so uh, uh, pretty good uh, pretty good day. So, Fritz Fisher. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a real pleasure to speak to you. In our age, you were a minor in the state of Michigan until you were 21. And I thought I was a pretty good hot shot and uh, I had some major league clubs dangling a lot of money to me and uh, went home and told my folks, I'm leaving Michigan and I'm gonna go be a major league baseball pitcher. And my dad said, look, you got two choices. You get your ass back to Michigan, get your degree, <laughs> or you can go in the Marines. My older, brother, my older brother was a drill instructor at Paris Island. And he said, don't do it. He said, go back to college and get your degree. It's the best advice I ever got. I um, had a nice career here, great group of guys. From the neck up, they're the best players. They were all winners. We all came from programs that were, well, Dick and Denny and I can't remember who else, Jimmy Steckley and myself. I played one year in the national championship team. Uh, and these guys played three times. We were three times national champions. But I, I got my undergraduate degree in history I underachieved academically and overachieved athletically. <laughs> but I learned the discipline. I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to end up getting into banking. I had a family that was involved in banking. So I ended up a career of 39 years in commercial lending and managing commercial banking operations. I had the discipline to go back, get my MBA in finance. I also taught for five years in the MBA program at the University of Toledo, where I live today. It just, we're lonely, guys. We need another national champion. <laughs> you know, the actuarial tables are working against us. So it's up to you guys to find a way to win, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Detroit and in my family, there's never a clear line between religion and baseball. <laughs> and you know, there's, there's ritual, there's faith, there's devotion, and there's a lot of discipline on both sides of that coin. And after I got out of Catholic Central and, and had the opportunity to come to Michigan and play for Don Lund and Moby Benedict, uh, I learned a lot more about those values focus, discipline, consistency, leadership, compassion, caring for one another. And that last value was so important for us. Don and Moby kept emphasizing, support your team, support your teammates. We trained together, we played together, we won together, we celebrated together, and here we are. We're still celebrating, we can't stop it. We wish we could go out and play with you guys, but we can't. Too old to think it, but I love to watch you guys play because you're the best. 
we really are. If you set an example for all the little kids that are coming up, and they want your autograph just because they want to meet you someday. Um, the, the one thing that I think is key to our success back then, and will be for you because you're getting this instilled right now by Tony Blackett and the others, and that is an indomitable spirit of winning. Don Lund would say, stripes on you, thou shalt not pass. That was our 11th commandment. And the other thing that he said was, battle, battle, battle. It was all, everything is three words, right? Just to cut off, just to cut off. I got it, I got it, three words. Battle, battle, battle. So remember, not me, but remember Don Lund's and Eric Bakich's famous words, because you'll live with that for the rest of your lives. Good luck to you. We got our one foreigner here, well he's half foreigner, and he now lives half the year in France. So uh, Dick Post was an outfielder for us, and his wife behind us, Annie. So, uh, Dick? Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Essexville, Michigan. Went to Bay City uh, Central before attending the University of Michigan. And I walked on to a national baseball championship team while earning my double E degree, which later on allowed me to travel the world fixing supercomputers. I, and as Dick said, I now live in France. But the experience of learning baseball and life from Moby Benedict and Don Lund, as well as the incredible camaraderie with my teammates is something that I'll cherish the rest of my life. And for you young student athletes, I can only wish that you have as much fun studying hard and playing Michigan baseball so that hopefully sometime you too can come back to Ann Arbor 60 years later and celebrate your achievements with your teammates. Can I say one more thing? I watched the game last night is number, I wore number 15, that was my number. Where is number 15? Wow. <laughs> the only difference between that 15 and my 15, he's a left-hand batter and I'm a right-hand batter. <laughs> scholarship there and here had offers a number of other places but it was always going to be Ohio State and Woody Hayes didn't want me to play baseball and I said well like some of these guys I didn't do well in academics my first year so I was nearly flunking out and I dropped out second semester and Lund said come back get your grades up the first semester and play baseball what a great move I made to have a backup I would have been done at Ohio State. But I have, for the rest of my life, been so proud to be in Michigan. And of course, now I live in Texas, and I have for about the last 40 years, and nothing's bigger there than UT. And of course, one of the teams we beat in Omaha was UT, and I'm so proud down there to say I'm from Michigan. I have it on my golf gear and everything, and there's never never a question about how what this university stands <coughs> for, really, for all those guys. And so you all got a great opportunity. Good luck to you, and thanks for the opportunity. That's the best. Ron, in the opening game against Texas, I was on first base and they gave me the steal signal and Ron figured the only way that I was ever going to get to second with my speed is hit it out of the park, which he did. <laughs> Ron Holmovich with the winning runs in the opening game of the College World Series against Texas. So, uh, uh, we got a lot, of, a lot of proud moments for everything. I'll be the last. Uh, I'm a Detroit uh, uh, native. Uh, came here, uh, we all played, a lot of us played in Detroit together, 
uh, and very good teams. Uh, a lot of fun. We played seven days a week uh, at that time. Not, not a thought that we would do anything else but, but play a little baseball, maybe study occasionally. Uh, but uh, I spent 10 years coaching here at Michigan, uh, six in uh, baseball, and then six at the end in, uh, as an assistant in basketball. So uh, spent 10 years in the automotive industry, uh, and then I uh, started my own business in uh, sports officiating supplies. I spent 38 years in the Big Ten as an on-field official, uh, 11 in, uh, 22 in, as an on-field, 11 as a replay guy, and five with the Big Ten Network as a football rules analyst. So that gave me, like John said, I'll tell you what, I wear my Michigan stuff no matter where I go. And it is invariably true that somebody comes up to you and says, go blue. I was playing golf in North Carolina a couple weeks ago and the guy, so I was wearing my Michigan stuff. And the guy said, oh, are you from Michigan? I said, yeah. I said, I you know, went to Michigan. He said, my son went to Michigan. He says, I'm from South Carolina. I wear my South Carolina stuff and nobody ever says a word to me. I wear my Michigan stuff and I can't cry. I got friends all over the place. So John said it too. It's a, it's a great entrance to, to, to business, to, to relationships. You'll, that block M will mean more as you get older than, than it is maybe right now. So. Guys, great win last night. We loved every minute when yeah. you kicked the ass out of uh, the leading leaders. So, uh, uh, two more. How about that? Good. Did I miss anybody? Hey, yeah. I want to say one thing. We had a guy on our team who was really a good baseball player, and he was the ulti ultimate Michigan man. That was our captain, Ed Hood. Uh, Ed gave up his starting position to one of the sophomores, I think, Denny Spollett. And he was, you wouldn't have known whether Ed was starting and playing every day or whether he was just rooting for you in the dugout. But he emulates what Michigan baseball was all about. He was for the team and he made a great sacrifice and he always stands in our memory as what kind of a team we were. Chemistry was there, guys played, it was not whether you started or not, how'd you play and how'd you win. Hey, Our first baseman, Dave Campbell, was here. His wife got sick on the plane. She just got out of St. Joe's Hospital, maybe within the last hour or so. Uh, he could not be here, but he asked, me, he asked me to read a quick message, and I'll do it real quickly. Um, he said, probably more than any other sport, baseball teaches one to deal with failures. The best hitters fail seven out of 10 times the pitchers certainly don't get everybody out. My life was one of those constantly trying and overcoming failures. I did it with determination, self-belief, and never giving up. We won the NCAA champion in 62. However, with 13 team members returning in 63, we finished sixth in the Big Ten. That was a failure, but all of us eventually succeeded in life due to the three things mentioned. Determination, self-belief, and never giving up. Go Blue. Yay. Uh, guys, thank you. Uh, yep.